Adam, of the two rulings today, you said the defense of marriage uh, decision is the most consequential. Why is that? It's the one that actually reaches the merits of the question. It strikes down a federal law that had denied benefits to same-sex couples married in the 12 states that allow such unions. And it also contains logic and rhetoric that will be of a lot of help to gay rights advocates in challenging bans in the other states that uh, for now prohibit same-sex marriage. How about the California decision? That's a little more complicated because the justices basically decided not to decide. They took an exit ramp. But the practical consequence of that decision will be to deliver same-sex marriage to California, the nation's most populous state, uh, bringing the number to 13, with maybe a third of the nation now having same-sex marriage. So that will have enormous practical consequences, though the grounds on which the court decided that second case, the Proposition 8 case, were technical and narrow. I see. Tell me, what was it like inside the, the courtroom? Uh, when Justice Kennedy announced his decision, he was quite animated. He has a good self-regard, and he knew he was issuing a historic civil rights decision. But then he had to put up with uh, an oral dissent from the bench, which is rare, uh, from Justice Scalia, and endure a 10-minute tongue lashing, quite sarcastic, uh, which is not the kind of thing Justice Kennedy enjoys. And he sat there stony-faced, absorbing it. Finally, Adam, did it feel historic to you as someone who's covered the court for years? The atmosphere in the courtroom was electric. It was packed. People knew it was coming. You don't typically know when a decision is coming, but since this was the last day of the term, you knew it was coming. And when you figured out that this enormous step forward for the gay rights movement had been achieved, uh, there was a collective sort of intake of breath in the courtroom. Thank you, Adam. Good to be here.